Well, hello, everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I'm so glad to see all of you here. Oh my gosh, we're going to have a great time this morning. Great to see everybody. Oh my goodness, we've already got over 100 that are watching. So this particular live is going to be all about making the Double the Love Table Runner from Sweet Pea Embroidery Designs. And um, I've been working on mine. The design is available in the description box below. There's a link to it. And you can jump over there and get that if you want. And then I did have fabric kits available through... A gnat just went by me. <laughs> I did have fabric kits available. Uh, and uh, you guys bought them out from Two Chicks Quilting. So... That's not necessarily a bad thing. If you've got a bunch of Valentine fabrics in your stash, then this is the perfect, perfect project for that because uh, it's so very, very scrappy. All right. So I've got it. I'll show you what I've got done on mine so far. And we are going to do it together. We're going to do a block of it together and then we're going to do the finish together. Okay. Okay. So this particular live is going to be for um, real new embroiderers. Maybe you have uh, an embroidery arm for your, uh, oh, that's all right. You'll be watching and learning. Betsy says she's got the design, but she's away uh, visiting with new granddaughter. Congratulations. So if you're new to embroidery, I'm going to go really slow. Okay. This is an, like an, a beginner tutorial because this is a really great project for you to kind of uh, test the waters a little bit and still come out with a really nice, successful project when you're done. If you're a seasoned embroiderer, then feel free to just Keep on going. And if you've got any tips or tricks that you might want to share, then please jump in the chat and do that. Okay. Because it, we all learn from each other. So, okay, good. Yeah. So this is from the light colored kit from uh, Two Chicks Quilting. And then there was a dark color way as well. It had more black in it and some grays. Still just as beautiful. And then I have got the other half of this one that I need to put on. And then, uh, so that'll be the assembly part of it. And then we'll put the backing on together. Now on the ends, okay, on the ends, in the pattern, the ends are blank. So when I see something that's blank, that's kind of a blank canvas. I have seen where people have, in, in their software, if they have embroidery software and you're kind of, uh, you know, savvy with it, you can resize these hearts and put hearts on the bottom. You can put lettering on the bottom. This says the Thompsons and the other one says established in 2001. You can, and this is just a font that is out of my machine. You can um, maybe put the batting and the top piece together and go to your domestic and do some cross hatching. That would be very pretty as well. So it really wouldn't have a design other than the cross hatching. There's a lot of things that you can do with this that are going to make it just absolutely beautiful. Okay. So, oh my goodness, we got everybody here from Florida to the freezing. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right. So, I am not going to pre-cut my pieces using the scan and cut. I'm going to go ahead and do them the old fashioned way. So if you do not have a cutting machine, then you, I'll show you how you would do applique on a regular uh, machine without having to do that. Okay. Um, I did pre-cut all of my pieces with the scan and cut and I created the embroidery design in Embrilliance, or I'm sorry, I created the cut file in Embrilliance embroidery software. And I've got videos on my channel to show you how to do that, tutorial videos. It's very simple, but not everybody has Embrilliance. 
Not everybody has a scan and cut. So I'm going to go ahead and do the applique the old fashioned way. Okay. That's what I call the old fashioned way. All right. So I was a minute late getting here. My uh, Keurig was, you know, taking its sweet time putting my iced tea. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> I like to quilt with two different quilt. I like to embroider with two different kinds of hoops. So let me move this down just a little bit. When you got your embroidery machine, it will have come with a standard hoop. I'm, I'm making the five by seven design and I'm going to be using a six by 10 hoop. The five by seven hoop is around here somewhere, but I'm making the five by seven. So when you make this, if you're brand, brand, brand new, each one of these center heart blocks is a separate hooping. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and then six that are the one we're going to make. And then they give you the design with three blocks of two hearts each, and you need to run that twice. So it's a total, well, yeah, you need a total of, right? So two, four, six, eight, 10, you need a total of 20 hearts. Okay. So um, just be aware of that. There's a lot of hoopings that go into this. That's why I started early or we'd be here till Christmas. Aren't you glad Christmas is over? <laughs> I am. <laughs> I love that we're working on Valentine's. I think it's great. Okay. So let's see. You're going to see me Sunday on the cruise, Marianne. That's awesome. I was just working on my, uh, my luggage tag. I've got it around here somewhere. So I'm going to show you just real quick how to do a hooping if you've never done it before. Now, this is what's called a cutaway stabilizer. There are several different kinds of cutaway stabilizer. Some of them look like paper, and this one is kind of sheer, so you can see through it a little bit, okay? But it's cutaway. It will not tear. And when you're doing um, like home deck type stuff, like this, then the, the cutaway that is, it's, they call it, uh, they call it no show mesh. This is a mesh and these are great. So, oh, good. <laughs> this on mountain standard time. So fees, it's fine. You're here. You're here. That's all. That's all that matters. Okay. So you want to make sure that you get the kind of stabilizer that is a, a mesh this is great if you're making quilts and you're going to do applique. If you do what I do where I take um, a, a design, a, like a paper applique design, digitize it using the scan and cut, and then create an embroidery design out of that, then this is the kind of stabilizer you're going to want. Then there is also the kind that looks, it's very opaque and it looks like paper. I don't recommend using that kind of cutaway stabilizer in home deck pro projects because it's very stiff. That's something more you would find like on the back of a sports. Um, I, I always think about um, hockey jerseys, hockey shirts. So they've got those real heavy embroidered things on it. That's got a paper cutaway on the back of it. One that looks like paper. Okay. So when you are hooping with these kinds of hoop, this is the standard hoop that came with my brother machine. Now, what I'm talking about, I have a brother, I have all brother machines, but no matter what kind of machine you have, the concept is all the same. So if you have a Husqvarna or, you know, the Viking, you might have a Janome, whatever. What I'm telling you, it may not be exactly the same, but the concept is the same. So you want to apply the concepts that we're talking about right here to your situation that you have in your sewing room. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. I appreciate that. She says she loves the way I teach. I was in the Air Force and they taught me how to be an instructor. So I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit so that, let's see here. I Well, I got to have it just right. Um, see, Goldsby, this stabilizer is actually a bro thread. I, or no, World Weedner, I buy it on Amazon it's in my Amazon store. Uh, I've got links to my Amazon store below, but 
that's where I get it. I like this particular stabilizer because it does not uh, shrink up when it gets ironed. It doesn't melt. Okay. So it's, it's fairly heat resistant and that can be real important when you're trying to iron, like on the back of these to get a beautiful uh, project like this, to have it be nice and flat, you've got to be able to iron on it and you don't want your mesh stabilizer to uh, stick to your iron or anything. Yeah. Carla, you're welcome for the old fashioned way. Absolutely. Not everybody's got all this fancy stuff and that's okay. I have a load of videos on my channel and playlists for scan and cut, um, working with all different kinds of things. It's not often that I do the old fashioned way, but I want to provide something for, for that too. So, okay. What about shape flex? Do I find that it shrinks? Shape flex uh, will shrink, I believe. So, and you just kind of need to steam it, uh, you know, hold the iron above it and steam it if you want. Okay. I usually use SF 101. No, I'm sorry. Shape flex. I got it. It's like a shape flex is real stiff. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the wrong thing. So shape flex is very stiff. It looks real firm and it's almost like designed to have stuff stand up. Okay. I don't recommend shape flex in this particular project. Okay. So, uh, and I did not put any SF 101 on the back of my, uh, my blocks at all. There's no need to, because it's got uh, batting in it that is going to hold and stabilize those stitches fairly well. Okay. On this particular project, if, if we were doing real heavy fills, then you might want some SF 101, but we're not. So, okay. What would be an easy way to know if the stabilizer will shrink? Uh, hold it over just hold your iron over it and steam it about that far away. Just get, don't touch it. Just get it over there and steam it and see if it starts to, it'll start to wrinkle and shrivel up. You don't want that. Okay. It no SF SF 101 is flexible. It is not stiff. Correct. Joanne. Yeah. Um, shape flex is stiff. Okay. So that's all right, Judy. Aloha. It's early for you. I know. <laughs> okay, when you're using your standard hoops, your hoop is going to have some north, south, east, and west markings on it. See those little, those little dits there? Okay, those are important. And then your hoop will have some sort of indicator, an arrow. It's like here's the five by seven right here. Here's the six by 10 that came with, and the same five by seven came. Thank you, Donna. You're so sweet. You're awful nice. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that so much. So here, the five by seven, it just has a tiny little arrow, but this is to tell you which way is up on the inner hoop. So your hoop has got two parts to it, an inner hoop and an outer hoop. Okay. So this one is telling me that this is the top. And then this, so this one has the little, see that? So there's an indentation there, all right? And then this one, see the little belly button? There we go. We got an innie belly button and an outie belly button. And that's how they go together so that you don't put this in backwards. On the bottom, there is not one. See that? Okay, so that's important. Take a look at that because that's going to determine how tightly your hoop holds together. On some hoops, it may not matter. You might say, eh, it's the same either way. But on some of them, there'll be just some gap around it. Okay, oh, that is stiff as Peltec. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Betsy, thank you for that. Y'all, SF, Shape Flex 101. Yes, she's right. It's not stiff. No. <laughs> We're talking about the same thing. I got it wrong around my head. I was thinking of Peltex. You're absolutely right. Y'all, I don't have my Pelon card right in front of me, okay? <laughs> All right. 
I get my mesh from Amazon. That's where I get mine. Okay. That's you can get, I get a ginormous roll of it so big for like 25 bucks and it works great. Okay. SF 101 is shape flex. Yes, you're right. Correct. Thank you for straightening me out on that. I appreciate that. Okay. So <clears throat> when you're going to be using your standard hoop, I'm going to point you over here toward my little scan and cut table. Let me back this up a little bit. I've got a sticker on there. This is backing. <laughs> that's from our, that's from our fabric kit. Um, you want to hoop on a firm surface. Don't ever do it on your lap. All right. Let me move my little tea mug from this morning. And you want to make sure your hoop is nice and loose. I've got a screw, a thumb screw down here. I'm going to open it up. Is quilting in the hoop needed for this project, Connie? No, ma'am. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this over just like this. When you cut your stabilizer, you want to make sure you've got about an inch or so at least all the way around. And normally when I cut my stabilizers, I will, uh, like say, this is the end of the roll right here. I'll just put the this screw part of it down here, and then I'll make sure I've got plenty up at the top and just run it with the rotary cutter on my cutting mat, okay? That way I make sure I got plenty. And all you do is you want to make sure to put the whatever is in the top up, up in here. I start at the top and just seat it in nice like that, okay? You can, if you've got bubbles, you can tug it a little bit and then tighten it with the thumb screw. I'm going to screw this up, tighten it with the thumb screw. Is the mesh in my store? The mesh is in my Amazon store. That's amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread. Okay. And then this is a brother screwdriver. Okay. It's, it's a multi-tool and it's got, you know, you can put this thing around, but if you put this in to the inside, there's a hole. Now the screwdriver is in the hole and that fits over this thumb screw and allows you to tighten this nice and tight. Okay. So you want this to sound like that. That's a good hooping. Okay. So that's how easy it is to hoop a standard hoop. You, you don't need to find center when you're doing projects like this because the digitizer has already done that for you. You only need to find center if you're going to be stitching on something that's not an in the hoop project. Okay. I always have a screw loose too, Carol. It happens. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now you can also use a magnetic hoop. Let me set this to the side. Is no show mesh and poly mesh the same? So Lynn, uh, not all meshes are the same. Uh, poly mesh is made out of polyester. Usually no show mesh might be made out of rayon. So uh, poly mesh is usually a little bit more expensive than regular no show mesh. You just kind of got to look at the description box on the, the, on the site and see what it's actually made of. But if it says poly mesh, it's supposed to be made out of polyester. Yeah. Okay. You learned so much. The brother screwdriver trick. Yeah, Teresa, hold on to that thing. That, those are invaluable. All right. So these are very handy to have for old fingers like mine. Okay. You're on Amazon. All right, Lynn, go for it. So on these hoops, this is a magnetic hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery. Okay, they make them for almost all the machines. Some, gen some genomes they don't have them for, but eh, pretty much. Not all. Okay, I'm not going to say all. So I'm <clears throat> going to put this. It has a piece of corrugated plastic in the middle of it. Okay, and all you need to do is, again, the way I measure is I use the top, okay? And I just lay it, if this is the end, I just make sure I have an extra inch over the side and cut it up like that, okay? And then I'm gonna turn this to the side, okay? All right, you're welcome. All right, so we're gonna lay this stabilizer, right? Just lay it on top like that. Now this 
I want to take this corrugated plastic and I'm going to lay it about halfway into the hoop. Okay. It's kind of hard because it's white on white, but you guys can get the idea. Just lay it about halfway. Now this, this hoop has got little indentations up in the two of the corners. And that's to tell you one side of the hoop or the other. It really doesn't matter which way you use it, but I like to use them with these on the outside. Okay. So I'm going to take the two solid ends and I'm going to just put the hoop at a 90 degree angle to the bottom hoop against the arm and kind of make sure that it's straight. I'm just going to lay it down. Just laying it down like that. I'm going to hold it and I'm just going to pull out the corrugated plastic. Now I've got a nice hooping. If you need to, you can tug a little bit. You never tug when you're doing clothing, you guys, but this isn't clothing, so we'll be okay. So now we've got a nice hooping. I don't know if you can hear that, but I got a nice hooping do, using the this one. Somebody had asked me to, let me, let me do this quickly. Oh, I can't. I've got a project in it, the, the multi-piece hoop. If you've got a multi-piece hoop, like the Brother Magnetic, um, you can get good hoopings before you put the magnets down, hold the stabilizer on the outside of the hoop. So you have to make your stabilizer a little bit bigger, hold it on the outside of the hoop, not the inside. Okay. That helps a lot. That's just a little trick. Okay. All righty. Good. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use this and we are going to stitch the, uh, one of the bigger, one of the bigger heart. And we're going to, um, we're going to get this done, like I said, the old fashioned way. So I'm not pre-cutting. All right. I have got to put in a new bobbin. That would help. It'd be very helpful. All right. My bobbins are from Designs and Machine Embroidery. I buy them by the tube. A tube like this, I embroider all the time, you guys, but this will last me probably about two years. Okay. So um, it's worth it if you can get them. I like to use pre-wounds because they're just wound more than uh, the ones that I can make myself, but I'm due and I don't want to have, although what I could do is run out of bobbin and let you see how to fix that. Maybe we'll do that because that happens to us. Does it not? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know you needed to keep the plastic? Oh, Judy. I've got about this much bobbin thread left. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in here so I can run out and I can show you how to fix it because that happens all the time and knowledge is power, right? My friends. Okay. So I am going to put my little bobbin right here and you're going to need three pieces of fabric and a piece of batting in order to make this. So you need your background fabric. Now, y'all, if you're doing your background fabric, you know, like this one said to make it seven by nine, go ahead and use your selvages. See that? You're going to, this is either going to go into a seam allowance or it's going to get cut away in an embroidery. So if, if, it, if you're doing a piece that's going to be cut away, use up those selvages, all right? Now on this one, if it ends up in the seam allowance, it doesn't matter. You can't even see it. It looks great. A lot different from quilting, okay? It's a lot different. I feel like you can kind of be a little bit more resourceful when you are doing embroidery than when you're quilting. So I am using the Brother uh, Luminaire XP3. It She started, this is Darla. Y'all say hi. She uh, started out as an XP1 and has had both of the upgrades to the XP3. So now she's the XP3. All right. When I change... When I do my threads um, and I'm doing applique, what I do is I kind of think through, uh, I kind of think through what's the first thread that's going to be seen. And that will keep me from doing a whole bunch of thread changes. So you can certainly start with white, but the very first thread that's going to be seen is going to be the outside stitching, the final satin stitching for the large heart. 
and this is what I'm going to use for that, I think. Is that right? No. No, that one's for this. Going to be this right here. This is going to be it. Okay. Now, when I, where are my tools? Right behind me. I also like to keep a little tray of tools. I like the tray. I kind of discipline myself to put my scissors continuously into the tray so that no matter what, I know where it is. I've got my little brother tool in here. I have curved embroidery scissors. We're going to need these to do trim away. I've got duckbill scissors. I don't use these until it's time to cut stabilizer away from a final project and it's out of the hoop. So these don't get used a whole lot. I have another little pair of curved scissors. Okay. I use these all the time for the most of just cutting threads and whatnot. I also have got little snips. What I do with those? See, they didn't go in here and now I can't find them. Yep. They like to hide. Yep, here they are. See? Discipline, you guys. Discipline. <laughs> so I also have a little bitty pair of snips. These are fantastic for trimming jump threads in between letters, anything, anytime you need to get super, super close to the fabric. And then I have a pair of Revlon eyebrow tweezers, the little pointy ones, because these are the best at getting itty bitty threads. Okay. These are the best. Hi, Belinda. That's okay. No problem. So the first thread that's going to be seen is going to be this light pink. And the way that I like to change my threads. Now you can certainly fully re-thread your machine every single time that you do it. So as I said earlier, whether you have a little bitty brother PE 770, okay, or the 800, or you've got the big dog like this, the concepts that I'm telling you are all the same and they all work the same, all right? So it doesn't matter. And this is not just for brother machines. This is for all embroidery machines. This is all about learning how to do things the basic step way. I also have, my tablet is here, okay? And I like to pull up my embroidery design on my tablet and leave it sitting next to the machine so I can reference my instructions all the time. Saves ink, right? Saves paper. But, oh, that's all right. We can, so can we call you Larry if you're using your hubby sign into YouTube? <laughs> that's okay. We have a lot of people do that. But what I do is I go into my settings on my tablet and where it says timeout, I tell it never when I'm working. Okay. And that way I don't have to worry about it, you know, cutting off and everything. So it's always going to be on for me while I'm going. Now in this particular design, the first couple of things on page two talk about your fabric B and C, which are for the panels. Those are for those end panels that I customize. Okay. And then your batting. All right. So it's got, because these apply to all sizes for the five by seven, six by 10 or the eight by 12. And if you got the fabric kit, it is big enough to make the eight by 12. If you're making a smaller one, you're just going to have extra scraps. Okay. All right. So then we get into the B and C that's the five by seven, six by 10, eight by 12. And then we're going to get into the six panels for the runner and the five by seven is the one that I'm making. So you guys can kind of look. So page two has all of your cutting requirements that you need in order to be able to make this. And then the next page at the top of page three talks about the heart side border panels and the fabric you need for those. All right. And then we're going to start in with the instructions. Okay. So most I won't say most. If you're used to making Kimberbell designs, Kimberbell will take you step one, draw a placement line. Step two, take your batting and put it on top of that placement line. And then it, step three, it will tack down the placement line. Step four, it will create a fabric placement line. And then you put your fabric on that. And then step six is you tack down the fabric. Okay. So digitizers like Kimberbell will take you step 
by baby step. Lori, to download to your iPad, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. I uploaded it to my iCloud and then opened it up in my files on my iPad, okay? Or easier, you can email it to yourself. That's a really easy way to do that. If you don't want to fiddle around with iCloud and files and just email it to yourself. Then open up your email on your iPad and download it and save it. Real simple. Okay. So where was I going with this? Right, right, right. So Sweet Pea, what Sweet Pea does is they want you to put your fabric and your batting on top of your stabilizer before you even stitch one thing because the very first stitch is the tack down for the whole nine yards, okay? So where Kimber Bell will use six steps to get you to that point, Sweet Pea is only gonna use one. And that's a real good lesson because if you're ever doing designs from somebody like, um, you're welcome, Lori. If you're ever doing designs from somebody like Fabric Confetti, she does the same thing. Vanessa does the same thing. She'll, you know, it's, it's almost assumed that you're just, it's just very efficient. Okay. So really be sure. Uh, I'm not using my five by seven. I'm using my six by 10. Yeah. I don't have a five by seven dime hoop. I'm using the six by 10, but you really want to go through your instructions first. So just don't assume that every single digitizer is going to give you the exact same instructions because they don't. Okay. You're from South Greenland. Oh, hi. Awesome. That's wonderful. Wow. That's great. I'm, ooh. All right. I'm going to put my thread. My thread. This is Exquisite from Designs and Machine Embroidery. I really like Exquisite thread. It works wonderfully. I prefer Exquisite, Isocord, Glide, and as I mentioned this morning in our live, uh, Incredit thread from uh, Sweet Pea. They have great stuff as well. Love it. I was using that this morning to make that luggage tag. Oh, you can buy corrugated plastic sheets at Michael's. You threw yours out too. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So if you tossed your corrugated plastic, go check out Michael's. They've got some, okay? Yeah. Dropbox works too. Yeah, uh, Brenda's right. Any of those file sharing apps. If you've got, you can use iCloud, Dropbox, um, Microsoft's uh, OneDrive, whatever you want, whatever you have available to you. I do not use Hemingworth. No, I'm, I don't, Sarah. Uh -uh. I pretty much stick to what my machines are happy with. So I've been okay with these so far. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I just tied the tails of my old thread and my new thread. This is how I like to thread my machine. I do use the thread guide on the top of the machine that is really for the bobbin to make a bobbin, but I just like the way it works as the, the thread comes through the machine. I'll grab the thread and unthread the needle, and then I'll just pull it straight toward me, okay, and thread the machine like that. This is a great way to thread sergers, embroidery machines, you know, cover stitch machines, whatever. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Have I found a brand of metallic thread? Yes, Teresa. I very much prefer the King Star from Designs and Machine Embroidery. Um, you, they market at many dealers, brother dealers usually, a lot of dealers. King Star is my metallic go-to. Absolutely. Been using it for years. Absolutely love it. Okay. Okay, good. If you can tie a knot, you do your threading that way, Julianne. <laughs> All righty. So again, if you just joined us, I left a uh, almost empty bobbin in the bobbin case because I wanted to uh, run out so I can show you guys how, matter of fact, let me show you something else. So I can show you guys how to uh, change your bobbin if you run out mid-project, okay? In your bobbin case, if you have a brother or a baby lock machine, you will have a purple dot in the bottom of your case. You probably got two bobbin cases with your machine 
One has a purple dot and one does not. The purple dot is designed to be used with embroidery thread, with embroidery bobbin thread, so a little bit lighter weight, okay? Its tension is just a little bit more than you would with standard thread, and I got a lot of fuzz in there. Oh, my word. Y'all, it's like I've been working or something. <laughs> my poor Darla. She's dirty. Be all right. Let me put this back in here. Okay. I love on this luminaire the ability to just pop that button and the whole thing comes off. That is such a brilliant design. The engineers at Brother did great with that. That's reason alone to buy this thing. <laughs> I probably had this thing now, oh, I don't know, five years or so, maybe a little more. 0% financing is a good thing, you guys. Okay. Am I going to QuiltCon? No, ma'am, I do not. Don't go to QuiltCon. Okay. Got tea going everywhere here. All right, so let's get busy with this. You can go through step by step all right it says hoop cutaway stabilizer in the hoop depending on what size design you're sewing load the design for the left or right block and then place batting one and fabric a right side up on top of the hoop so that's why i was telling you they're not going to take you it's not going to do a placement line for your batting and then attack down for the batting and a placement for the fabric and attack down for the fabric we're just going to shoot right to the tack down okay all right. What are you doing? So if you're using matching thread from top thread for bobbin thread, using a 40 weight, would I use the standard bobbin case? I do. Uh, matter of fact, I was just working on a luggage tag where I needed to have embroidery thread in the bobbin, and I did do that, and it worked out beautifully. So, all right. So let me have my hoop, okay? Now, let's talk about batting. This is a fantastic use for batting scraps. Whenever you're doing a project like this, see how this is kind of cut and shaggy, okay? Doesn't matter. It needs to be seven by nine and come to find out it's closer to 10 by 10, so it's perfect. This is, this is why I save my batting scraps. Now, I'm using a thin poly, you can use 100% cotton. You can use a bamboo. You can mix and match. It doesn't matter. So long as they have about the same hand, they're going to be fine. So I actually have different kinds of batting in here, and you'd never know it, all right? It just doesn't matter. So that's why, um, what's the project name and brand? Teresa, we're making the Double the Love Table Runner from Sweet Pea. Let me get my thread out of here. So I am just going to put down my batting. Now, as I mentioned in another video, what do I use the rulers for on this? Uh, I just use it for centering, okay? So let me get my works. Uh, let me make a spot right here. So a really easy way to center your projects. Let me turn you here a little bit so you can see. So remember, we talked about the hoops having little north, south, east, and west points. And this particular hoop, it's got little stickers on it with zeros, zero center, okay? So I'm just going to put my fabric right on top of my batting. I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half again. So I've got a little quarter here, okay? So if you wanted to draw, you could, but this particular design, you can kind of eyeball it. So I'm just going to go up to the half, and I'm going to put this point kind of halfway here and halfway here, and fold it over, and open it up and fold it over. And that's how we know we're pretty good, okay? So that's going to work out great. So now I know that my design is going to hit on here, and I won't miss it, in theory. <laughs> in theory yeah okay what do we got going on okay this looks good so again the first thread that is going to show is going to be the light pink 
And so right now what it's going to do is it's going to do a placement line for the large heart. Okay. So I've got my thing down. I need to put my foot down. I need to go to embroidery on my machine. I'm not going to get into how to do the machine, you guys, because all machines are different. This is more the technique of doing the actual applique and whatnot. Okay, so let's see how it is. Oh, we're going to do the tack down. There we go. Plenty of fabric at the top. I'm doing the five by seven. Plenty of fabric on the side. There we go. I know that's going to work out well. You can tape it if you want to. You don't have to. So this is just giving me the outside line. Now, we're going to use the trimmer by George in a little bit, and we're going to talk about that, okay, while we get to that point. All right. So now I've got my batting and my fabric stitched down to my stabilizer, and we are ready uh, should the heart of my machine be going the other way? You, there's, there's a right and a left. Yeah. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. Um, it's all right. You guys, I've already stitched that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've already done it. I have it over here. This is just a sample for you guys. I already have it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Let me see here. Okay. Ta-da. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to stitch the placement line. I'm pretty sure that we're going to do stitch the placement line for the heart. Yes. Yeah, step two on the top of page six, we're going to stitch the placement line for the large heart. So I'm going to go again. All right. Now, when you're doing designs that have got like a heavy satin stitch around the outside, the color of thread uh, I don't know, Barbara. I don't know the weight of that. So when you're doing a heavy satin stitch, the, the color of thread that is used for placement and tack down is really not that important because the satin stitch is so thick, it's gonna cover that up. All right, so I've got that all done. Again, I do not have any Shape Flex SF-101 on the back of this. So I'm just gonna put it down and you just wanna make sure it covers top, bottom, side to side. You cannot see the placement line at all and I'm gonna let it tack it down. All right. So we're gonna do what I like to call lap work. And on lap work, you gotta remove the hoop and do some stuff with the, uh, with the embroidery, okay? And I'm looking for a smaller, oh, I moved it. So now we're gonna do some lap work. All right. Now we need to trim away the outside of the pink heart, okay? So you guys, this is what applique is. Applique is sewing one piece of a fabric on top of another piece of fabric. And we've got to trim this away from the outside, okay? So I wanna show you guys a little trick, all right? When you're doing lap work, or if you're going to be trimming this away, this is a quilter's cut and press. Very, very handy to have. You want to make sure that you do this kind of work on a firm surface because you don't want to take the chance of popping your project out of the hoop. There's very much, no, I didn't use any starch to stiffen the fabric, ML Weber, not at all. Um, there's a whole lot of forgiveness that can happen in embroidery but popping it out of the hoop is not one of them. If you pop it out of the hoop, you have to start over. All right. So now I want you to take a look at these. These are curved embroidery scissors. They're double curved. We've got a curve here, curve here to get down in the hoop. And we've got a curve here so we can trim 
the fabric without cutting the threads. Okay. The blade, the bottom blade is away from me. Okay. If you're left-handed, it's different, but the bottom blade, I'm right-handed, is away from me. Okay. So you want to trim clockwise. You want the bottom blade as close to the thread as possible. If you're left-handed, the bottom blade is over here and you're going to trim counterclockwise. But if you're right-handed, you want to trim clockwise. Let me uh, get in a little bit closer so you guys can see. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to come in here. just want to pick it up, get into it. And then you, you want to try to do as long a cut as possible. That's going to prevent the little shreds from fraying or whatever. And get right there. Hold up your fabric and trim right next to it. You're going to get a very close cut because you've got that bottom blade right next to the thread. And do long, smooth cuts. I'm going to show you. See that? See how close that is and pretty? Long, smooth cuts is what you're after. Okay? If I was to be doing counterclockwise, now I'm going to have... I just did this one counterclockwise. Look how far away from the stitching that fabric is. Look at the difference on both sides of that heart. See, it matters. If you're right-handed, trim clockwise, counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, trim counterclockwise. And you're going to get much closer applique cuts. Okay? I do not sharpen. These are gingers. Uh, you guys, don't go cheap on these. You want to pay good money for your curved scissors. I think they're about $40 or $50 a pair. They're worth it every penny. I've not sharpened these, and I've had these things, I don't know, 10 years. All right. I'm going to see if I can't trim that up even closer. Now, this the industry standard for a final satin stitch is generally about three millimeters. So as long as your cut is within that three millimeter width, you should be fine for it to be covered. Okay. So there you go. Okay. I'm just going to toss that. All right. And then the next is the uh, small heart. Okay. The placement line for the small heart. And there we go. I could change thread colors, but again, because uh, this is not going to be seen, it really doesn't matter. So look at all the different thread color changes I have not had to deal with. I do not have heat and bond. So this is applique, but I'm not, I did not pre-cut the pieces in the scan and cut. So I don't have a substrate on the back. Okay. And I'm going to just lay this right over the top of it again. You guys, this is a, a big project, but it's still very simple. Um, you can probably knock this out in a weekend or so, but you've got time before Valentine's Day to get it done for sure. pretty easy. You don't have any work on the back of the hoop or anything. Charlotte, are you ambidextrous? She has both right and left on those scissors. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I'm going to trim away around the outside of my little heart here. Okay. Let me widen this out a little bit. There we go. I can hear, can you guys hear Frida walking around? She's over there hoping I dropped something and I didn't. 
She's got such a strong, that's my dog. She's over there on the other side of the room. She's got such a strong food drive. Now, if you do this and you leave any little um, thread shreds, you want to get those up because you don't want those poking out uh, outside of your satin stitch. This is the old fashioned way of doing applique, you guys. And it works well, you know, it's fine. Okay, all done. The next stitch is the final satin stitch around the outside of this heart, the large heart. And I'm just going to go ahead and let this go. This is a five minute stitch. So you get the idea now about this is the double the love table runner from Sweet Pea Embroidery. Okay. Yes, we will have the replay. No problem. Oh, you can't cut clockwise. <laughs> That's okay. So when a satin stitch happens with machine embroidery, there'll generally be what they call an underlay. So it'll do straight stitches back and forth, and then it might do a zigzag back and forth. And that gives those satin stitches something to sit on top of. Okay. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So it's going through now around this and it's creating the underlay. So when you see that, uh, don't think that it's just going crazy and it's not doing the stitches it's supposed to. It's just creating the foundation for a real pretty satin stitch on top. I will tell you, uh, on the multi-needle, I used my 8x12 hoop, that the dime magnetic, and I was able to do two at the same time. Okay, I was able to do that. So that was kind of cool. So now it's doing the zigzag on the underlay. Um, let me see here. I want to see if I have got the, I don't know if I have got uh, the table runner design here on my laptop. I wanted to show you how I did that while we're watching this stitch. Let me see if I've got it. I don't. Nope. Different laptop. Nope. Don't have it. Okay. Which is fine. Let me see. I might have it on my USB here. If you've got embroidery software, you might be able. Let me see if it's on my USB. Okay. I have the borders. There we go. Yeah, let me let me pull this up on it on in brilliance and I'm going to show you how I did that. Okay. If you're interested while this is stitching, I will give you uh, let me present and share my screen. And we're gonna go here and in brilliance. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to open up my little folder at the bottom of my screen and grab, grab it, drag and drop into the screen. And then you can't see that other window, I know. And I'm going to grab the right one and drag and drop and put it in there. Okay. So you're seeing my brilliance. I'm going to come up here to the preferences. There's a little yellow folder at the top. And I want to use the 360 by 200. This is the multi-needle. That's the 8 by 14. That's the magnetic hoop. Is that it? 10, 10 needle magnetic, 8 by 12. There it is. I'm going to click apply and OK. And then I'm going to click down on hoop at the bottom. And there, it turned it sideways if you double click on that. So I'm just going to highlight the first one. And I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm just going to slide it all the way over so it is right on 
the side there, and then I'm going to highlight the second one, and I'm going to slide it over. Just like that. So I was able to do both of these at the same time, which is very, very handy. Okay. Now, to make your life even easier, this is in Brilliance Essentials. This is the basic and Brilliance uh, module that they have. What I did was uh, you can do a color sort. Okay. So you can see each one has seven that they do. So we have red, ultramarine, red, ultramarine, red, pink, pink, pink. Okay. So what I want to do is, let me move this, I don't know if I can move it down. This to stitch, I'm going to uh, just grab it by the picture and move it up. Move this up. Okay, and hover it over the one you want it to be after. This is just a real quick thing to show you guys. So now what it will do is it's going to stitch this placement line on the left and then this placement line on the right. So that way it does that at the exact same time, okay? You can change the colors and do that. So let me grab this red, drag it up, and then I'm gonna grab it on the picture and drag it up under the other one, okay? So now it's gonna stitch placement, or that's actually fabric and batting tack down, fabric and batting tack down, there's the placement line for the large heart on the left, placement line for the large heart on the right. See how I did that? So that's a real rudimentary way of being able to essentially do a kind of color sort, okay? And that way you can do multiples at the same time. So if you wanted to, if you've got a single needle and let's say you've got the luminaire and you want to do the big hearts at the same time, you can. You can do them one at the top and one at the bottom. You just got to move them around. So that's not what this is about. This is the old fashioned way of doing stuff. But I wanted to show you that. OK, it is a game changer, Christina. Absolutely. Because it streamlines your workflow. And when you're doing these kinds of projects, there are many, many hoopings. You're going to have uh, that kind of thing. So look at this beautiful satin stitch around the outside of the pink heart. Isn't that pretty? Just gorgeous. OK. Oh, yeah. Thank you, ML Weber. I appreciate that. Yeah, y'all think about a, uh, a thumbs up. That would be very handy. And share, please. That helps me so much if you guys share. Uh, spread, the, spread the word. Okay, now, the next thread is also going to be seen. I'm going to change my threads. I'm cutting it from the top. I'm waiting for my bobbin to run out. I haven't run out of bobbin yet. I wanted to show you guys how to Run out of bobbin midstream and keep on going without freaking out. <laughs> no fun to freak out when you're doing embroidery. Yeah. Okay. Allison likes those Ginger scissors. Yeah, y'all buy the best. The cheap ones hurt your fingers. Don't, uh, don't go cheap on your scissors. They'll last you for years and years and years. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. All right, you guys. So it's time to do the final stitching around the small heart now, okay? Yeah, the satin stitch was beautiful. Okay. So another thing you can do in Brilliance is to just change the thread colors, and that will also uh, create an... Uh-oh. Bobbin thread is almost empty. Here's what happened. Okay. If you have a machine that does not do this, let me let me show you something here. So Brother created a new button on their machine, and it looks like a dot. Let me get you in so you can see. Okay. It's this one here, and it looks like a dot. That is a knot button. That's to create a knot. All right. So we've got a little thing that says here. Bobbin thread is almost empty. Use the reinforcement stitch button. And that's what it's talking about. The reinforcement stitch. To sew a single stitch repeatedly and tie off the stitching. Use the move frame key. That's this one. To move the embroidery carriage so the embroidery frame can be removed or installed. Afterwards, the carriage moved back to its previous position. All right. So let's do that. Okay. 
Sometimes I get this wrong. So what it wants to do is it wants to tie it off. All right, we're going to do it. It calls it a reinforcement stitch on here. We're going to tie off. Okay, now we're going to cut. Now I'm going to touch this. The presser foot will move up and down. Keep your hands away from the presser foot. I've already, or maybe I do that when I get back. Yeah, let me do this. You do that later, you guys. I did that out of order. That's okay. So old bobbin out, new bobbin in. And I got to find the end. Now we're going to play this game. There it is. Remove the embroidery frame and replace the bobbin. Oh, is that going to move? No. There we go. Just did that. Okay, to move embroidery carriage to its previous... Y'all, I did that all kind of wrong. Anyway, you get the idea. Tie it off. Remove your hoop. Sometimes these things are even too fancy for me. Okay, so now let's talk about... I ran out of bobbin in the middle. If you're in the middle of a satin stitch, it can be very obvious if you try to start again and you don't go back, you want to back up about 20 stitches. Okay. So you're going to go into your needle. Let me see. Let me get this down so you guys can see it. Okay. You're going to go into your needle plus minus button. Every machine will have this. You want to back up 10 stitches and 10 more. Okay, so what that does is it takes the start of the stitch before the bobbin ended and then brings it through. Okay, that's very important if you're on a satin stitch. Is the tie off button on your machine when it was a luminaire? Yes, it is a luminaire. The tie, yeah, I have the tie off button on my NQ3700D too. Yep, they started putting those on all of the machines. I learned to do this the old fashioned way. And so that thing kind of confuses me sometimes. <laughs> so it's going through and doing it's, uh, it's going to finish up this final satin stitch. So, all right. So you guys got the idea now. Luminaire one XP one. Yes. Yes. So, the upgrade to the XP2 and the XP3, they don't change the physical components of the machine. The button's always been there. All it changes is the brains, okay? Yeah. This even still says XP1 on the casing, okay? But it's had both upgrades in it. What are we doing at, in, I can't tell you that, Nikki. <laughs> It's supposed to be a surprise. It will be different than what we did last time at Mall Queens. Yeah. We're going to have a good time. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Alrighty. So I don't, I'm, I'm anxious for this to finish so we can get to putting the rest of it together. Yep. I'm just going to go ahead and stop this. Okay, because this is just a sample. Okay, you guys, so you get the idea how it all works and all that to do um, applique in the hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. All right. So that's it. That's what this would look like. You can still see. I've got a little bit of a piece of thread that hung out. Can you see it sticking out there in that red satin stitching? It's right. I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. There's a white piece of thread. See that? That's when you need those little snips. Those are Fomore snips. You don't have the tie off button on your quattro. No, just back up the stitches and keep going. That's, that's the way I learned. Yeah. I didn't have the tie off button on my quattro either. I've got one down at the coast. Yeah, 
You had to try. <laughs> Mickey says I had to try. <laughs> You're funny. All righty. Let me get in close so I can show you the up close work using the Fomore snips. Okay. You got to be careful on those satin stitches. You don't want to catch them and have it be a mess. So I'm going to use this and just hold it up tightly and clip. And the bottom of that, it just disappeared. Okay. So that looks really good. That turned out real nice. Okay. See how I've got some little frays out here? You want to make sure that those frays get caught up underneath that outside satin stitching so that they don't show. Okay. All right. So now let's cut this up using the trimmer by George. Okay. The trimmer by George is not necessary. You do not have to have one of these, but if you're going to start making a lot of in the hoop projects like this, where you've got to trim up blocks. So generally when you are making these after you get your outside done, they would want you to go ahead and trim away the batting. Okay. While it's in the hoop, that takes time. And if you're doing a whole lot of blocks like this, it takes a lot of time. Okay. So you would pull the hoop and then trim away the outside. All right. Of the batting. So let's do this with the trimmer by George. The trimmer by George <clears throat> is exclusive to hoop sisters. And I've got a link to it below. If you don't have one of these, you're going to want one. Believe me. I'm not, I wouldn't tell you this if I didn't mean it. <laughs> So the Trimmer by George, this is Trimmer by George 3.0 right here. See that? There is a 2.0 and a 1.0. The only difference between 1, 2, and 3 are the materials used to make the product. And then 3 is a little bit more narrow. 1 and 2 were a little bit wider. Okay. So it has, this one has an aluminum lip. You can see that. It's got an aluminum lip on it. Okay. All right. And the numbers, so we're looking at it here, 3.0, that all looks straight to you, but the numbers are backwards. Why? Because you, you're going to cut using the numbers from the other side, right? So when you use the trimmer by George, you need a 60 millimeter rotary cutter. Most rotary cutters that have a button right here, the regular Ulfa one, the 45, it can't get a deep cut because the button gets in the, it gets in the way. The button is in the way of the blade getting all the way down to the fabric. So that's why they recommend you use the 60. Okay. So let me show you how this works. All right, I'm going to open this up. Okay. A rotary mat is handy, but I'm just going to turn this, or you can turn your project, whatever you want to do. So instead of trimming away the batting in the hoop, I'm just going to fold this over, just my, just my fabric, okay? And I'm going to put the metal edge, see the metal edge? I'm going to put the metal edge up against the trim line. This is, um, this is warped. <laughs> this is going to be a problem because <laughs> it's not going down to the thing. And I'm going to fold it over like that. Okay. So I have got, <clears throat> I've got the fabric folded up underneath just like this. And you've got the batting out here and your stabilizer out there. Take the rotary cutter. Okay. That trims that away. Okay. And then you use this and fold it over. Now y'all, when you're, when you're doing blocks like this, I recommend, this is me personally, this is not the instructions to use a half inch seam allowance. If you can, See how I used, I just flipped it over and then used this side because especially on these in this inside where it's going to meet up with its partner, okay, of the other side, half of the heart, it is much easier 
to get this to pin correctly if you've got a half inch seam allowance, at least on the inside here. Okay, that matters. It, it does matter. It, you'll get a much better finished result. Some of them say quarter inch. I didn't look at this one. I need to look at it. Uh-oh, I cut it. It's because it's warped. Yep. I'm going to have a hole there. Yep. Now that's the downside. You can put a hole in this. Be careful. Th this is this is warped, you guys. It's all... That's why that happened. It's not straight. See how the gap? This is warped. That's why that happened. If you do that, because you might, <laughs> you can fix this. This, you're actually going to stitch right inside here. If you do that, it's okay. You're going to put that on, use some stitch witchery or some heat and bond or something and patch it just like that. Okay. It'll work just fine. Nobody will know but you. So that's why you got to be careful with this thing. That's not the first time I've done that. How do I know how to fix it? Well, because you can cut if you're not paying attention. So again, put the lip. Make I can take a peek and make sure there's no fabric. Okay. There we go. That's better. And I want a half inch seam allowance on the inside here. Yeah, sometimes this thing works too good. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I'm not cutting that away on that one because I got I'd have to do a patch if I was keeping this. I didn't do this on any of the other ones because I was on my regular cutting table. You did this too on the very project. Yep, Kim, it happens. It happens. Snug that up. Pull it out. Okay. All right. And then you want to do this. Now, again, if that happens, just you guys patch it, okay? Nothing wrong with that. I've done it with stitch witchery or, like I said, heat and bond. Just push it together, especially when you got a busy fabric. But you can put that together and just patch it, and it'll be fine because it's going to get stitched into the seam allowance. <laughs> you know the kind of words y'all just said. Y'all, I don't get wound up about this it happens if, you, if it happens you know how to fix it it's fine don't worry about it all right so let me show you the beauty of the trimmer by george look how close that trimmed next to that line okay but again look on the side and make sure you don't have any of your your pretty fabric sticking out from underneath that i want you to take a notice see this line right here that stitch line this is what you're going to align all of your blocks on is this stitch line it is just frustrating. I know. It's fine. Everything in life that's worth doing is frustrating. <laughs> These lines right here are what you're going to use to align your blocks, those stitch lines. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oops. Wrong direction. Okay. It's fine, you guys. Didn't do it on my, this again, this is a sample and that's fine. All right. It wouldn't have happened if this hadn't been warped. It got left in a hot RV for way too long. And uh, we haven't had hot enough days yet for me to put it outside. Yeah. Oh, you thought the trimmer was a razor? No, it's just a ruler with a metal edge on it. Okie doke. So let's go. We're going to go over to the other side of the room now. I'm going to move you guys. Because I'm going to stitch this together. You know, well, I'd have to change my foot, change my thread. I leave Darla set up for embroidery all the time. So now we're going to go over to the other side of Sew Machine Row here. And I'm, I'm going to roll you guys over there. And so if you uh, need to go get a cup of coffee or something, then uh, now's the time. I don't need that. I need this. And I need this this is my other end and my batting and my two end pieces i prefer to put these together on my pq 1500 you can certainly do it on your regular machine okay let me get my mouse and all of my stuff and we're ready to roll okay that's good yeah the trimmer by george is fantastic but now you know be careful with it okay so i'm going to roll this over
Let's see here. Let me move the computer. I know I, I need to have like two different setups, right? And oh, let me roll the camera. You guys are coming over here. You see my ironing station? And you're going to be looking at the ironing station because you're going to watch me iron. I'll show you how I do. Whoop. There we go. Sorry about this, guys. I wish I had a big fancy setup, but I don't. Let me get you on this side of the cord thing. This is my life. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Bye, Judy. Have a good afternoon. All right, here we go. Okay, so now we are ready to start putting this thing together. So I'm stitching on the Brother PQ 1500. This is a straight stitch machine and I really, really like it for this kind of, uh, this kind of thing. Thank you, Patty, you're very understanding. All right, so here we go. So remember after I trimmed that, I showed you guys that we're looking at these edges of this outside stitch line. Okay. That's what we're looking at. All right. So when you're making this, according to the pattern, the hearts go to the inside. So you can do it either way. Okay. Whatever way looks best to you is fine. But I'm going to show you how to line these up so you don't drive yourself crazy. Now I want you to see some of the seam allowances on this one are half an inch, but because of the way they're digitized with three of them in a single row column, you've got quarter inch seam allowances on the inside. So don't get all hung up on seam allowances, matching seam allowances like when you're quilting. We don't do that, okay? Again, embroidery is way different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pin, taking a big, strong, this is a standard Dritz quilt pin, okay? And I'm gonna go right Let's see, this way. Yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to get up close so you guys can see what I'm doing. So this is important. Okay. You need to see this. So I'm going to go right in the corner inside that, that corner stitch line. And it came out right there. See that? See the pin? It's inside the stitching, not in the seam allowance. It's on the inside. And then you want to do the same thing. You're going to go right into the inside. Let me get where you can see. It's hard. Inside the point, that corner right there. Okay. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Let me hold it still. See that? The pins are, the pin is inside that stitch line. That matters. Not outside, inside. Now I'm going to hold the pin between my thumb and forefinger horizontal. You can kind of just make sure they're both straight, right? Hold it horizontal. Now I'm going to take another pin, okay? And I'm going to pin it so you don't, you don't want it so that that pin is like this or like that or right or left. You want it to be horizontal and flat. Same as your pieces. Let me back out a little bit. I'm too close and you guys. Yeah, don't use standard dressmaker pins. They're not strong enough, you guys. I'm going to take another pin and I'm going to pin right behind that. In one side and out the other here. Okay. And I'm going to take one more. I'm going to do it in the in that batting right before it in one side and out the other there. Now I can pull that pin. So I've anchored it in two spots. OK, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go in this corner right on the inside of the stitch line and then in the corner on this one and marry those up. Hold that pin horizontal. And on this one, I'm really just going to do it like. 
in and out in the batting to make sure, okay, it looks like that. You've got some room here. The reason I like to pin twice on this one, you've got some room here for that bottom fabric to think it wants to be pulled through faster than the top. And we don't want that, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew, let me get my marker for you guys. Pull this. I'm gonna sew just inside that stitch line, just to the inside so that the, that outside tack down stitch is just, I'm gonna run the needle right next to it, okay? All right, so let me sew this for you guys. Now, what, what kind of thread am I using? <clears throat> I'm using connecting threads. This is a Poly Essential Pro, Poly, nice and strong. I've got it in the top and the bottom, okay? And I'm gonna start out in the seam allowance. I'm going to very, very carefully take one stitch over that pin and pull it. All right. Very carefully. Pull these. All right, this is exactly what you're looking for. I cannot see that seam. I cannot see those stitches in that seam. You see that? You also want, see how those seam lines match exactly right there? Let me move over here. See how they match exactly? Look at that. They're perfect. Right next to each other. Right on top of each other. This one too. See that? That's perfect. That's what you're looking for. When you're putting these kinds of projects together, that's how you anchor those and get those to look exactly like that. So those outside stitching corners are digitized to match up perfectly. So you wanna anchor them with that pin horizontal and then after the stitch, just to keep it from being pulled through, okay? So this one looks fine. And then what I'll do is just kind of give it a kind of give it a little thumb finger crease, whatever, with my nail. Okay. And I'm going to press that open with the iron. We're going to press that open. Okay. So that one's done. Now let's do the other one. Once you get the hang of this, you'll be rocking and rolling with it, you guys. Okay. So this needs to go like this. I'm going to put it like that. Okay, I'm gonna go in that corner and in that corner, get them kind of level, hold that right. I don't want that to pull through faster. I'm only using one pin on that one. It should be fine, I hope, <laughs> I hope. You got this one evened up, and I'm going to go right behind it. I'm going to put this right behind that seam anyway, just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. All right. Ugh, I hate that. Stitch right inside that stitch line right next to it. Very careful. There we go. Okay, there we go. That looks great. That'll that'll work. Okay, that's exactly what you're looking for. Okay.
So before I go any further, I am going to go ahead and go to the ironing station and I'm going to press these seams open. Okay. You usually trim your batting after tack down and then have to join the blocks with the stabilizer and fabric. It is easier, Mickey. Yes, much, much easier. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, if you have one, I'm going to use a seam roll for this. This is a, uh, I've got a link to it below. Okay, this wonderful man out of Fort Worth, Texas makes these. And it's got wool on it. And I'm going to use a Taylor's clapper as well. This one's by Riley Blake. He's got some small ones. I've got them all over the place here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down and steam it. This is a Sapporo uh, 527 gravity fed iron. I'm going to push this like this. This is the key to a nice flat block. I'm going to do this other one the same. Again, you want stabilizer that isn't gonna shrink up and shrivel, all right? And don't get the water soluble. That's not what we're after either. All right, now, that's nice. That's looking nice and flat, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead, give it some steam, and then I'm using my two clappers on it, press it down, get it nice and flat. That's beautiful. That turned out gorgeous. Just perfect. Okay. So now let's sew these together. Okay. Sewing these hearts together will make you crazy. Unless you do it the way I'm fixing to tell you. Okay. There we go. Now. Just because I pressed these open one time to get this flat seam does not mean that they need to stay open. Again, it's not a quilt, okay? I just press them open so that the seam allowances understand from the front, this is what we're gonna look like, all right? Now, when you go to sew these hearts together, you're gonna take your pin and you're gonna pin through the center of the satin stitch line, not on either side of it, through the center, okay? If you don't, they'll be like this when you go to sew them together and make you crazy. So I'm gonna do this like this. Okay. So now I'm gonna open up that little seam, push it back over, I'm going to put my pin right inside the stitch line dead center in the middle of that bobbin thread that's right there. And I'm going to push it through the center of the seam of the satin stitch that it's going to marry up to right inside. Push it right there. Look at that. My edges are nowhere near the same depth. Doesn't matter. Same seam allowance. Does not matter. Hold that pin horizontal and flat and pin, anchor it on either side of it, okay? Oh, I messed up, hold on, before you do that, before you do that, with this open, put your pin right, I'm kind of guesstimating where that seam allowance is, I'm gonna go right through the middle, inside, right through the middle, and I'm going to go right into the seam allowance, right into the seam for its partner. It's obvious as I'll get out if those two don't match. If they're going, you know, if there's a stitch off, it, it, does, it just doesn't work. So now I've married up those seams and I'm going to anchor right behind it. Okay. Okay, now I can pull this and I'm going to anchor that bottom right through that, uh, right through those bobbin threads in the middle of that satin stitch. And I'm going to anchor right into the middle of its partner across the way and hold that up straight. I'm going to kind of nest that. Hold that straight. 
It's very fiddly. And then I'm gonna anchor right in front of it. Okay. Then if you wanna lay over, that's fine. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna pin right in the middle of that satin stitch just inside the stitch line. And I'm gonna pin right into the center of the satin stitch for its partner right across from it. I can hardly see, I know y'all can't. Straight across. That's nice and level and even. And I'm gonna anchor. If you wanna anchor in front and back, you can. You don't have to. I might, just for grins. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing to these other two, okay? I'm going to do that right now. So let me get it right in the middle. It's hard to do holding it up, y'all, but you get the idea. You want to anchor in the middle of all of those satin stitches and pin behind it so that it's not pulled, the bottom is not pulled through faster than the top. How many layers of batting do I have on my ironing station? Um, it's got the the bottom layer, let's see, is regular batting, I think. The top layer, then, then it has a layer of clear vinyl for water moisture protectant. Then it has a layer of insole bright. Then it has another layer of batting. And then it has the final fabric. A lot. Okay. All right, so I've got both of those are anchored now. And I'm going to go through this center seam again where these two meet right inside the stitch line. Okay, and right in right into the middle of that of its partner across the way. This takes a, a little, it takes a minute, you guys, to get this right, but it's so worth it in the end. Okay, hold it nice and straight. And I think that if you get through this without poking yourself, you should get a medal. <laughs> yeah, all right. And I've got that. And now I'm just going to go ahead and get these final two corners put together just like the other one. So matching those satin stitches is so important. Anytime you do any of these um, these designs, I know I learned this trick when I was making the sweet pea Easter cross and lilies, trying to get that cross to line up. All right. So for all that work, let's see how we did, huh? <laughs> let's see how we did. Could you use a walking fit foot for this? Sure. Absolutely. You betcha. Okay. Use my stiletto, get this going. Here we go. Very slow over those pins. Don't pull the pin before you get there because, and I, I don't recommend doing this, you guys, but usually, because if you pull the pin, uh, you may mess up your anchors and then you will you'll have a mismatch. Very slow. Oh, that's tough, tough, tough. Lots of batting we're going through. Lots of heavy satin stitching. That's why I like this machine for that. Oh, I didn't put those together. Uh-oh. I forgot to do that corner, y'all. Okay, I'm going to cross my fingers. Let's see how we did. 
<gasps> oh my word. I was ghost sewing. Look at that. Oh, for crying out loud. All that pinning. Ah. <laughs> ah. No bobbin thread. That's the downside of these machines. They don't have a sensor on them. <laughs> ah. Oh my goodness. Y'all. <laughs> ah, y'all my life <laughs> this is what happens <laughs> ah, all of that pinning and i was ghost stepping the whole time can you believe that so what do you guys want to talk about while i pin this again <laughs> feel free I'm going to get this done. No, oh, my goodness. Yeah, especially on a live. That's when it happens the best, right? Right on a live is perfect. Um, for crying out loud. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. No big deal. <laughs> You'd be using other words. <laughs> i tell you what, y'all. Um, Sewing on camera in a live has taught me grace. <laughs> Don't you think? The cruise. Not sure what to bring on during downtime. Hey, Tracy, I cannot wait to see you. We're going to have a ball. <laughs> ah, um. I don't know. So there's not going to be any sewing machines, right? So, uh, oh, I'm bringing a puzzle, a big uh, thousand piece puzzle. So we can, uh, we'll have the table up in the sewing, in the, in the classroom. So we can hang out in there. Um, it'd be kind of fun, put a couple of tables together and have a puzzle party with uh, adult beverages. Yes. You shouldn't have asked if I preferred. Oh, well, Mickey, it's it's just the um, this is designed to go through these thick things. That's what it's designed for. So it's just um, right tool for the job, right? So yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? We'll just. You know how they have those tables in the library and um, they've got a puzzle on the table. Well, I told Jamie and Amy, I said, um, hey, I'm going to bring a stitching puzzle. And so it's a big thousand piecer. And so we can um, we can get in there. And, uh, and then we can sit around a table and find edges and tell lies. Are my Ginger double curved embroidery scissors the six inch in length? I think think so. You're always cutting holes in it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm telling you guys, seriously, stitching on camera has taught me grace. There was a, um, a friend of mine, as a, she was going to get married on a river barge in San Antonio. She worked for uh, American Airlines. She was a um, customer service. She was in charge of all customer service for American Airlines up in Dallas. She wanted to get married on the river barge. Well, the river barge in San Antonio didn't uh, didn't make allowances for her to have her little like she had set up. And I was watching her and y'all. She went up to the manager in charge of the river river barge dinner cruise. And she they were like, I'm sorry, we just can't help you. And she stood there and talked to this man. And. She did never not have a smile on her face when she was talking to him. And don't you know, she got her way. <laughs> and I watched her and I thought, talk with a smile. That's how you do that. And that has taught me grace as well. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. 
So you can see now, I mean, I'm sitting here yakking and I'm not teaching and I'm already done with it. So it just took a minute, but <laughs> go stitching. <laughs> All right, let's do this again, shall we? Oh, pin that bottom one, Becky. I always leave that one for last. Let me pin that bottom one. So I've just, that's one thing I've tried to learn how to do here too. A kind word does go a long way. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's do this again. And let's see if it goes this time. Over the pin. There we go. But I guess being in customer service, that taught her that, right? She was very good at her job. Okay. Because I'd have been like, you know, out of the military, I'd have been like, excuse me, I paid for this and you promised me. And rah, 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 rah. No, no. She was like, that's not how you do that. <laughs> And they set up a separate little barge for her with another driver. And she got married on that dinner cruise, by golly. Amazing. A little later than planned, but it worked. Okay. One more over that pin. There we go. <laughs> See that? That's what you're after. See how these match perfectly right here? That's why you anchor on both sides and right through the center of that satin stitching. That's how you get that effect, okay? Yay. <laughs> Perfect. <sighs> okay, so now I'm gonna press this open again and I'm gonna, uh, oh no, I'm not done yet. All right. So once you get your, this is for your ending. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to fold this in half and put a little crease for center. And then this, I'm going to uh, match the center seams here and put a little crease for center. Mm-hmm, put this all right, and I'm gonna put my pin in from the back on my center about a quarter of an inch down, and a pin in this center just inside the seam line. This isn't as crucial, okay? But I've got it straight and horizontal. Yeah, anytime you guys are doing these kinds of projects where you've got to marry up those uh, satin stitches, that's how you do that. Will I be putting batting between the topper and the backing on this? I will not. You can. You don't have to. And I'm not. So let me get this pinned correctly here. And on this end, pinned even on that. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my batting. So I've got my my thing pinned on here, right? I'm gonna lay my batting on here as well. 
Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew from this side because I need to see this stitch line right here. All right. And then I'll trim the whole nine yards up. Okay. Would have been prettier if it had uh, that cross hatching on it, like I was saying. It'd be nice. All right. Okay. There we go. Now we've got that on with the batting. Perfect, perfect. Very good. Okay. Oh, yeah. That quilt on the wall behind me, that's American Pie. I'm working on that. Okay. Let me have my backing. Come over here. Oh, oh, oh. You guys can see my ironing station here. Okay. I want to do this one first with my ghost stitching. I'm going to press this open as best I can. Got some very, very stiff seams in here, you guys. Very, very stiff, perfectly placed seams. All the difference in the world. All the difference. Okay. Get this done nice here. All right. That looks great. Boy, that turned out pretty, didn't it? Oh my goodness, if I do say so myself, very nice. Okie dokie. So I need to trim this up now. Get it nice and straight. <clears throat> This is a hemness dresser from Ikea, and I love it because in the um, top drawer, I have everything I need for my, um, you know, like rotary cutters and all kinds of stuff like that. In the second drawer, I have all of my fusibles, and in the third drawer, I have got like uh, pleather and zippers and all those kind of oddball things like that weird stabilizers that I rarely use, that kind of thing. Okay. That's great. That turned out really nice. All right. Get rid of this. If you guys ever have puckering in your lettering or anything like that, this one's not too bad. They do make a wool press cloth. OESD has this and I embroidered press cloth on it. So I don't use it for batting and you can use this to uh, press on embroidery and it will help remove so like you can see I don't know if you can see the lettering kind of imprinted on this right here it imprinted on it and it will smooth out any kind of puckering that you might have if you've got lettering like that all right so now the final thing I'm going to do my, bad, my backing is cut slightly larger, like inch, inch and a half all the way around, uh, larger than it was supposed to be. How about that? And I guess I cut it. I've got the wrong piece. Where's the other piece? I got the wrong piece. I think that's the extra piece. That's not the batting piece, backing piece. I think I left it over here. Did I? What did I do with it? I cut it back. I cut it back. I'm like, I grabbed the wrong piece. <laughs> so I will, um, this is it right here. 
this is the part that should have been put back in the stash, right? Nope, I cut it too small. That's what I did. Got to sew that up. All right. It's one of those days, you guys. So I will cut this slightly larger than, you know what I did? I forgot to account for this extra piece on here. You want to cut it just slightly larger than your, um, your project. Okay. And then I will go ahead and stitch in the ditch to make sure it's on there right and baste it all around. And you want to leave, except for a little bit, you're going to leave it to flip and turn it. Okay. So you just do a regular flip and turn finish. So we are, uh, almost at the end, you guys. So this turned out really cute. I'm going to go ahead and piece my backing and get this. <laughs> Y'all, it's one of those days. <laughs> yeah. The block I'm using to iron the, the seams, that is a seam roll. It's an ironing. It's a seam roll. And uh, I've got a link below in the description box to those. Um, I love them. I've got the long one for blocks like this, and I have the short one that I use like at my ironing station here when I'm piecing. So the patriotic quote behind the luminaire, oh, that's just a panel. It's just a panel that I had. So that one that says America and independence and all that on it, that's just my panel. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish up i got to piece the backing, make it just a little bit longer and trim it to size. And then it's just a turn and flip method on this to finish it up. So it turned out really cute. I think now that I think about this before I do that, I think I'm going to go into the luminaire and stipple around the lettering on here and get some kind of background quilting on this because I, I'm not crazy about it being plain. You don't see any links for the seam roller, Betty? Uh, let me let me see what I can see. I've got to go out to YouTube and go to the where we're at right now on the live. Let me look at this. Um, let me go to my channel. And there we are. There's the double the love runner right there. And I need to... Let's see if I've got it. Hmm. Oh, that's because we're on the live. You cannot see. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I will make sure. Yeah, normally I can see all of the stuff underneath, but I don't see all of that in there. I will put it there as soon as we finish, Betty. You'll have it. Okay. No problem. Yeah. So this has been a lot of fun, you guys. Uh, I am going to go ahead and um, I'm glad this didn't work because if it did work, I would have gone ahead and finished it up. And I am going to put this on in a hoop and I'm going to use the embroidery feature, the digitizing feature in the luminaire. I'm going to do some stippling around that and get that done. So, oh, no. I'm not going to stitch in the ditch and then stip and flip. Good catch, Teresa. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'll stitch and flip and then stitch in the ditch. Turn that around, right? The other way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, you guys. You see, it happens to all of us. Don't lose your coal. This, too, will pass, right? In time, will pass. So I really appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I've got to get a fix on this. I'm going to do some extra stitching and I should have it uh, done tomorrow morning for the situation room. Okay. Tell you about the blocks on the wall. Those are American pie. It's a, uh, it was a block of the month by QT fabrics. And now it is just, you can get the kit at Fiberworks fabric studio. And it's a lot of fun. That's, I've got a whole nother row of it. I got to, Got to sew these together too. Got to get, I'm, I'm ready to put in the sashing. All right, you guys, thank you so much for spending your uh, afternoon with me. I've really enjoyed it. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.